All right, so we have Ephesians 2, and we will talk about how to wear the chest plate of righteousness and the belt of truth. So we read Ephesians 2, um, we just the recording went a little bad, but uh, I will add extra materials. Yet the belt of truth means keeping the Jews where the long robes, and all those long robes are preventing them from walking. walking. Big steps. They walk in small steps. So one thing we do is that we put that rope into our belt of truth, right? Ephesians six twelve. It's about the belt of truth. And you read Ephesians six twelve again. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Right. And we are fighting the spiritual war, and we are fighting the stronghold. Stronghold is a tower that's built in the middle of the city, and there's archers shooting arrows. And the fiery darts of Satan can be only protected by what? Ephesians 4, 6, 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And that comes to you. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of, of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Continue. And taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Right. And last time we went through the helmet of salvation and our identity in Christ. So we have to always be watchful. There's an eye piece. And we have to be watchful for our sin. And slay it down, whatever is not worthy. And what's most importantly, as a summary, we have to continue to keep on our mind, like Philippians 4, 10, 8 through 10. What is lovely, what is honorable, what is good, what is meek, we keep on it. And God sanctified us. Can you read Jude 1 and 2? Sanctification is... The uh, getting in there, Jesus Christ. Becoming more like him. Becoming more like Christ, yes. Mm. Jude 1? Yes. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called sanctified by God, the Father, and pres preserved in Jesus Christ. And keep and preserved. And you are keep and preserved, preserved in Christ. And if our mind is always on how do we love God all the time, we are filled. We are no longer this plastic bag that have a hole and have our worldly desire fill in and leak out that never fill because God has filled us with his self and in him I have everything that I need not my phone on my phone my car my house everything everything when I pray on him so you too when it's hard call upon the Lord and be saved and John 3 16 what did it say for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God have over 300 promises in there, and a year have 365 days. Each one of you do one, one promise, and that's your homework for tonight. And read Ephesians 2, okay? So the main idea about Ephesians 2 is about our identity. And the main idea is mostly focused that can be applied to wearing the armor of chest of righteousness. Can you read Ephesians 2, verse 17 through the end? 17 through 22. Yeah. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens and saints and the members of the household of God. We are fellow citizens and saints in God when you accept him. So don't let the public school tell you that you have no purpose. You are a cosmic dust. And who is the one who justifies? Do we need to care about what other men talks about us, our identity? No, I think we do. Because, like he says, he's vanity of vanity. All men's face away. Wealth, good car, clothes, nice things, 
beauty, external like fitness. Can we bring all that to heaven? What can we bring to heaven? Only our faith. Only our faith and holiness. So the most very important thing is that we don't take value and we don't take our identity in things of the world. So continue. Um, Your book, verse 18. What? 20. 20, yeah, thank you. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles. Foundation and of the apostles. Mm -hmm. Who are the apostles and the prophets? All the people he's appointed. Well, Apostle Paul wrote this letter. Right. Right. And the uh, prophets are people who spoke the word of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into the holy temple in the Lord. Who are we? Yes. He affirms our identity once again. We are temples of God. Is that holy? The Spirit is in us. And when we ask for bread, will He give us stone? When we ask for fish, will He give us snake? No. When we ask for peace, what will He give us? Peace. Yes. And read Jude verse 24. So belt of truth right here, and truth, it has to be fastened. Have you memorized Bible verses? Have you kept them in your heart so that you can slay down that cobra's head with the word of God, the sword of the spirit? Jude yes. 24? Yes. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. From stumbling. And to present, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Why do we wear helmet of salvation? Is to have the joy of salvation, that we are God's children and He's working us. We are justified when we believe Jesus in heart, not only by mouth service. We are not called to be empty talkers. We are asked to do verse Timothy two eight. I desire therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath, we're doubting. Amen. Amen. And we are fighting against, is it flesh or blood? Mm -hmm. What are we fighting against, Noah? The forces of darkness, spiritual darkness. How do we fight against that stronghold that is very tall and there's devils start fighting, just coming from the arrows? Using the armor of God. Using the armor of God. And how do we bring that stronghold down? By constant faithfulness to Him. Yes. To, in doing what? Oh, serving him. And serving him. him. And can we love someone when we don't know them? No. So what do we need to do to God? Make his name known. Yes, but before that, we need to know who? Him. Mm -hmm. Can we believe in Jesus, believe in God when we don't know him? Can we trust in someone that will save us from sin and all our trespasses? We don't know him because Romans 10 it said Romans 10 verse 9 through 13 the word is near in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith that we proclaim because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from dead you will be saved you have to believe you cannot just say it do you follow his commandments? Do you fear God? Do you Are you watchful of your sin? Are you continue thinking of how to love him more or continue to fill in your heart with your desire? Are you continue thinking how do you love Jesus more? How to know God more? What's God's promise for you? How can you spread his word and let people observe your ways and make disciples of all nations? Are you thinking of that? So that's what God commanded us to do. Jesus himself, nonetheless. So bless here of righteousness, where does sin come from, Noah? Uh -huh. The heart. And that's why we wear righteousness. And in Greek, it's not just wear and put on, it's arraying, piece by piece. We have to remember his promises for us so that our heart don't get stabbed by bitterness or Satan's spear to cause strife. Because that Satan's arrow is going to pinch in deep and cause you to say something to that brother, cause you to hate that brother. And... What does First John say about that? What does the Bible say about hating brother and loving brother? First John chapter two. Anyone who 
hates the brother and proclaims the truth is living a lie. Well, everyone who hates his brother abides in that was called darkness. darkness. Mm -hmm. And whoever loves his brother abides in light. the light. Yes. And in him there is no cause of S. You just read it, Jude. Thank you. No, in him there's no. 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 Remember, what does belt of truth keep you from? Remember, sin. no, belt of truth keep you from sin, but you put your desire into the belt of truth, and then what can you do now? From this, you used to do this. You can run. You can run. You can run big steps. So, from and when you are walking this, and when you try to walk, what would you do? You, you stumble. 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 Right. So, in whoever loves his brother abides in light, and in him there is no cause of stumble at all. Thank you. So that's the belt of truth and the armor of righteousness. Read one promise of. God's promise every day. Just look at it all night. And then one by one, you know his promise. You know he's good. You know you won't perish when you believe in him. You know when you believe in your heart that he had risen in the third day. And his righteousness can save you. When you follow his commandments, when you love him, he will love you. Right? And that's it. And that's the armor, armor of righteousness. You continue your heart think about his your head think about his word your heart look for loving brother because love beats all if first corinthian 13 okay because having love in heart is the strongest weapon first corinthian 13 4. love is patient and kind Love does not envy or boast. It's um, it's after Romans, so flip to Romans, right after Romans, so you can read thirteen verse five. Thirteen. Thirteen verse five. So I'll read verse four. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist its own way. It's not irritable. It's not arrogant, sorry. It's not arrogant. It does not envy or both. It's just not arrogant. Hmm. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in, in iniquity. And rejoices in wrong doing. Yep. And rejoices with the truth. And you wear the belt off. And do you fast in it or just let it loose? Every day, you got to fast and your belt of truth by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and reading the word. Do you know his promises? Can you trust in a person? Because when you're falling from a building, when a random guy comes by and say, I will save you from all your sins and your physical troubles, would you believe in him? I don't even know you. So that's what the same thing happened to people in the world because they're not taught who Jesus is. Why should they love him when they know don't know who he is. Don't believe who he is. So spread the gospel of John. Spread the gospel. Let people observe your way that you're changed. And if you haven't believed it, read the gospel of John and be saved. You know, know his goodness and try and believe in it. But whoever born of the flesh belongs to. Yes. And whoever born of the spirit belongs to. Because God pre. Destined us. It's at the beginning. He predestined us. It predestined you to be a godly man. It predestined me to be a worker for him. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we know we are your holy temple. And Lord, we know that we are your servant. And we, if we love our brothers, we abide in the light. And if we, let's say we do love our brothers, but we don't. We hate our brothers. We abide in darkness. So Lord, let's love our brothers, have a loving heart, put on your promises and your word because your word is righteousness and put on your words on us every day. Array them one by one, reading it in the morning. Array means putting it carefully. And Lord, we ask that you give strength 
and endurance and wisdom for all these people listening. Give it to Noah and let him be a godly young man and help these people and all of us to spend a long time in you and become more, more and more like you. Sanctify us, God. Give us endurance for our day-to-day -day life. Give us strength in our hardships to overcome them and give us peace amongst us. Let us love you with our mind, heart, and soul. Have the fear of the Lord, wearing helmet of salvation, always keeping good thoughts, and what's honorable, what's loving to other brothers, and what's meek among our people. And Lord, let us wear the belt of truth, holding it fast every day, prayer, supplication, and put our desires into the belt of truth. And let us run to you, Lord, in the righteousness, in the path of righteousness. We're so thankful that you're here with your son that died for us. And thank you for your blood that cleanses us from our iniquity. Pray for Miss Kimbrio. May you heal her and pray for families that are suffering with cancer at Harvest. And we just pray that you'll heal um, the Walenskis. We will just ask you to heal um, many people who have surgery and from COVID. And Lord, we just ask that you would grow up this young man, these and young men at Harvest to continue to know your word and walk in the path of light and love one another and share the word to one another and continue growing you. Holding fast to what's good, tying the belt of truth, wearing the armor of God with your words every day and putting on the helmet of salvation, being watchful of their sin. And let us watchful and cut that cobra. Two seconds with the sword of spirit. In Christ's name I pray, thank you for your son and let us pursue holiness as that's the only way to heaven. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it. Thanks, thank you. And that's it for today.